And we're live. Hi, we're live. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Mid I know. It's five. <laughs> I didn't. I looked at the song and I was like, "Oh shit, it's about to end." Wow, my camera check. isn't all zoomed in on my face this time. <laughs> hey, <I'm pissed>. hey. <laughs> we might have a professional stream today. Wow. Frag logic number ninety-two. The episode Skyless's camera is fixed. <laughs> It's, it was never broken. It was never broken at all. The day, my, of the, the day of the streamer learned how to select video options. It was, it was the day I actually decided to properly uh, frame it. My daughter's knocking at the door at the beginning of the episode, so we'll just oh, throw it out well. the window. Oh, it's well. What's up? <coughs> um, so uh, today, joined by my good buddy. Skyless, a.k.a. Colin. Got my daughter going off in the background. Uh, episode 92, Frag Logic. We have uh, a number of topics that we're going to be talking about today. Um, mostly around all of them new fresh games that just came out. Uh, Advanced Warfare, Sunset Overdrive, Evolve, uh, which is not out, but we got the alpha this past weekend. Right. Um, and... Uh, am I missing any? Some other games that I think we didn't play that came out on some other systems. But, uh... Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. YouTube also got 60 FPS. Gonna talk about that. And then gonna re uh, reassess and talk about Destiny. We also got GTA 5 first person mode. It's completely out of left field. I wasn't expecting that one at all. I was not. So, we get to uh, hmm. talk a little bit about that as well. So, kick things off. Weekend gaming. Colin, what'd you play? Whew. All over the place. Um, I played some Gears, actually. Uh, played COD. Uh, last night, I actually played for two or three hours. Um, I actually played a game called... It's a really old game. Kings of Dragon Pass. Uh, which is Dragon Pass. It's like a from 1999, I think was when it was from. But they have like an iOS port. Uh, I somehow stumbled upon them. I was looking for something to download, and it's like a choose your own adventure game, like cranked up to 11, like with complete, complete with uh, like an economy, and you have to make decisions for your clan and build your clan in the pa- uh, in like this big patch area. Hmm. Anyways, it's pretty cool. Uh, it is 10 bucks though, which is pretty pricey for iOS oh, games shit. and for something that's really old, shit. but. It has a ton of replayability, and uh, there's a lot of content there. So it's pretty cool. Uh, played. I didn't play Evolve, but I watched some streams uh, instead. Mostly I just wasn't really interested. I played in the previous alpha, so like not a lot of change between then and now. So just kind of picking up on what was different and seeing what people's initial reactions were. And also started another old game, uh, Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodline. Uh, it's a pretty old RPG game, kind of in the style of Deus Ex. The original. Right. Um, so I picked that up the other night because it was on sale for Steam for the Halloween sale. Uh, so I picked that up. Oh, shit. Someone just mentioned something we got to talk about, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's funny is that I saw he was in the chat, and I was like, ooh, he probably wants to talk about Star Citizen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, is that... That was that it? all? I think yeah, that was it. That's a lot of that's a lot of gaming. Yeah, that you were all over the place. Uh, yeah. For me, I stuck with uh, a lot of the mainstream. I think AAA games that basically came out: uh, uh, Call of Duty: Advanced Warfare. Uh, played quite a bit of that. I've been streaming it in the mornings. Uh, Sunset Overdrive, which uh, you know, I feel like we should probably tackle that one first because I think that'll be probably the quickest, and then. We could talk about Advanced Warfare last. That might be the longest. Uh, also played Evolve's Alpha on Xbox One. Um, and I previously played the Alpha on PC back in... Was that July, Colin? We got the first one? Yeah, July, right. it was it's like July, July or August. Or, yeah, I can't remember exactly. But I played it uh, PC then, then I played console now. Um, feels better. For sure, uh, but we'll talk about that some more. Played some Destiny. I'm still on my Destiny grind. 
I don't give a fuck if y'all don't want to play with me. That's messed up. Leave me out to dry out by myself. Not all of us unlocked the last word. <laughs> um, and that's about it. I, I played uh, uh, Terra Battle a little bit. Um, and that's about it. And what's up, everybody in the chat? Markin, Frosty Brethren, uh, It's Bay, Steely, Tricks. I'm not joining that damn football league. Nemo, what up? Frag Logic, bang, bang, bang. Uh, Koopo, who else is who else is in there? Sin. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? And that's that's talking right now. Yeah, yeah. We got some more people. We got some more people creeping. I'm looking. I see you guys. It's creepers. Um. Oak, what's up? The big armada, what's up? What's up? Uh, so let's let's go ahead and kick it off, Colin. Let's go ahead and kick it off with some Sunset Overdrive. I'll start it off. Hawk Tanner, what up? Hmm. Sunset OD. I haven't played it all, so this is going to be all you. This is all me, 100% me. All right, so let's start off this by saying I think the game is fun. All right? I think the game is fun. <laughs> that already and... sounds like a caveat. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start by saying I think it's fun. Please, please don't murder me. I think it's fun. And then you were supposed to lead in with the but, <laughs> but I didn't say it. I think it's fun. You have to, you have to up your destroying of fun. Look, look. I'm not gonna get on your level. All right. I think the game is fun. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, it definitely doesn't take itself too seriously, and it doesn't want you to take the game too seriously. Uh, dialogue. And wittiness in it, uh, very comedic. I found myself laughing quite a bit throughout the two hours or so of of gaming. However, however, (laughs) (laughs) however, however, (laughs) this is not a game for me, and I'll tell you why. There is too much noise going on in the game. Now, the grinding and stuff is fun. The humor and stuff is lighthearted, and it's good um they kind of they kind of teeter between like ridiculous and raunchy and like cute and kitty right like it teeters that line like back and forth and so i think they do a nice job doing that um and they will definitely keep some people engaged in the game but i just don't feel like this is a game one and this is not a, a knock on uh, uh the game itself this is more of a marketing the way the game was marketed Sunset Overdrive should have been a launch title. If it was a launch title right now, uh, when the, or I should say back a year ago when the systems came out at this current time, it would be fantastic, right? And I, I still think people would be playing it. Unfortunately, they come out a week before all the mega blockbusters are hitting, and this is being sold as a system seller, and it is not a system seller. It is not. You should not have a a white Xbox console with Sunset Overdrive. It's just not. I think the game is fun. I think they did an excellent job Insomniac being Insomniac. The game is fucking great in terms of presentation, overall feel. But it's just not a system seller. Like, there's, it's a single player game, right? Um, There's Chaos Mode, which is a co-op experience, very similar akin to kind of a Horde-ish thing, but there's some objectives where you kind of run around it's a little bit bigger and expansive but i don't feel like that's this is the type of game that's going to stick right like i don't feel like there's going to be a community around this game hell weak um because of all these these big titles and that's where i feel like it being a system seller that's where i feel like it falls flat it is good for what it is i think it's going to have an audience that might buy it it's like a cross between you know like a saint's row and a jet set radio somewhere in between there the, the humor and stuff of saints row the maneuverability and um uh oh i say overall control feel of the game is kind of like jet set radio um I, I can't give it enough compliments i just wouldn't recommend someone buying this game and i should also say that i did not purchase Sunset <coughs> overdrive i stuck to my guns like i told you guys i was going to do this is not a purchase for me um, it's it's a great game, but I just couldn't shell out sixty bucks for this because I don't feel like I would get my money's worth uh, in the game because I would only play it a week maybe. Um, and I think it's 
it's pretty evident with all the games that have come out in the last week or so of what's being streamed, how popular they are, what's being shown on YouTube, and then looking at Sunset Overdrive, it's not sticking with gamers. It's just not. It doesn't have yeah. that lasting power. And it's very evident to me um, and anyone that's interested in playing it. Again, it's a fantastic game for 30 bucks or 25 bucks. 60 bucks these days? Like, I, I, Look, you need to blow my fucking doors off for $60 in order for me to play it. Or I need to play 300 hours like I have in Destiny. I have 300 hours in Destiny, Colin. Three, 318. Um, so I, I'm not going to have 300 hours in that. I'm going to have 15 20, it's pretty maybe. crazy when you think about like uh, single player games that have huge audiences and fan bases. Like it's all epics, you know what I mean? It's all like huge story, big, uh, big adventure type thing. It's like reading like a huge book, like Lord of the Rings. You know, it's yep. like those types of games. Uh, you have Mass Effect, Skyrim, or Elder Scrolls, Mass Effect, uh, Bioshock. Like all of these are very exposition driven. Yeah. Uh, and then you have Sunset Overdrive. It's kind of like positioned itself as a comedy. Uh, which is just a really weird niche. And even in the movie industry, you don't see very many comedy movies that become like sequels and franchises, you know? Like, it's really hard to do. Uh, and it's especially hard to do when you talk about a $60 purchase. Yeah. On top of that, like, it's bundled with the system. Yeah. I, I'm That's still weird. I'm floored by that. I am absolutely floored by that. And And like I said, I cannot compliment the game enough, but I can't justify spending 60 bucks on it so for me you know i i will i will beat this game i will tell people that this is a great game if people say should i buy it hey i have 60 bucks i can buy one game right now what should i buy i would be like there's three games right now destiny you can get you can get some hours on that um call of duty you can definitely get some hours on that and then halo those are the three games right now that I would spend $65 on. And if you have more than that, and you can buy all the games. Shit, buy all the games. Get Sunset Overdrive if you have $240 and you want to get all four games. Fine by me. But when stacked in this specific, this specific slot of games, it's, it's a hard, hard sell for me to be pushing that. It's Bay just mentioned Bulletstorm. I think actually now that I think about it, Bulletstorm is a very good um, analogous game, I think, to... Uh, Sunset Overdrive and Bulletstorm certainly wasn't going to be a system seller, right? Uh, in terms of its comedy, it's actually a solid game on its own. Like it stands up on its own, uh, but at the end of the day, like you're going to play it and throw it away, right? Right. And tricks. This is what actually Skylis and I talked about before the show. Is if you guys remember, and this is how uh, you said Dead Space. We actually, I was actually thinking Dead Rising is what we were talking about. Yeah, Dead Rising um, was. Uh, but. The, it was pretty close. It came out when when Xbox launched, right? It was a launch title. And the game had three sequels. Three. I feel like if Sunset would have come out a year ago, people would be like, man, this game is fucking great. Give me a new one. Dead Rising also wasn't like full comedy. Um, talk about the first one. Obviously, The first they, one wasn't. They, they went, <laughs> went way out there. They went way out there with it. But the first one was like, yeah, you have the clowns and shit, uh, which obviously are meant to be tongue in cheek. Uh, but it wasn't like a comedy game. It wasn't something that was like marketed that way either. Right. It was like an open world, do what you want with zombies kind of thing. But it wasn't yep. comedy. Uh, so I think that was an important part of how Dead Rising got their sequels. Exactly. Um, and the things that I, you know, and just talking about the game overall, besides like the story, the things that I really like, movement mechanics are fantastic. The weapons, Colin. These are some of the most creative weapons I've ever seen in any game ever. Which you other than say maybe, about Bulletstorm. Uh, other than, okay, Bulletstorm, Saints Row, um, and then Sunset Overdrive is up there for some of the most creative, wacky, like hilarious guns I've ever seen. Um, so, again, like I'm saying great things about the game, but when you talk about what's out right now, it's very hard for me to be like, you need to go pick up this game. So, that's my overall, um, you know, kind of what is the two and a half hour assessment of the game it's hard for me to be like i want to pick that up when i got call of duty now right I got destiny we got halo next week it's like shit sure we're gonna I play can. this I, i'm on the struggle right now <laughs> <laughs> i just started vampire the masquerade because it was on sale and i'm like shit this is pretty fun and then the next night call of duty is released and i'm like 
fuck. <laughs> like, now I want to play both. Yep. And next week, I'm going to have all three. And then it's just keep going from there to the end of the year. Like, absolutely insane. Yeah. And, Mark, and you hit a good point. Here's the, the issue is, like, let's say the game wasn't ready. The game obviously clearly could, couldn't have been ready earlier, right? So summer would this summer would have been a great time. Pre Any time pre-Destiny would have been a great time. Uh, you look at March, that would have been good. But you talk about, let's, let's say if it would have got pushed out 2015. February, stacked. We talked about this last week. March, stacked. And then you're like, okay, well, then you're back into the summer months when game sales are traditionally not very good. And then you're looking at the probably the biggest holiday season we're ever going to see in gaming ever uh, in 2015. So it's like, I, I don't know when this game could have come out other than pre-Destiny. Last, like two months ago. Two months ago. <laughs> so it's, it's a really tough position to be in. And... I'm very interested to know what the sales count is. One of the white Xboxes, but also of what uh, Sunset Overdrive does if it actually comes out with announcing the the total number of units sold at some point in time. I'd be very interested in knowing because this is a again it's being ported as a, or or positioned as a system seller, and I'm just I'm floored by it. So I really want to know how well they do. Um. So now I got my little bit on that, Colin. You, what did you play? The oh, okay, we're gonna split evolve. That's right. Yeah. Did you want to shoot COD to the end? Was that what you wanted to do? Yeah, I want to shoot that to the end. Uh, evolve Alpha. Ah, we can finally fucking talk about this game. Yeah, because we both played in the earlier Alpha, uh, and we both had pretty much the same opinions. I yes. think uh, same initial impressions. Um, Although you played it before me, because you played it at the trade show, and we're super hyped for it. I did, but we had the super polished build, and we weren't playing with mouse and keyboard. We were playing with controllers, Xbox 360 controllers, mind you. And you played once with people next to you, which we'll get into uh, as exactly. we talk about matchmaking. Exactly. Uh, so, Evolve... Can we? I think we can both safely agree that this game plays... When everything is clicking, this is an excellent game. Yep. And everything clicking is probably, would you say, some percentage of time that is less than the <laughs> what the average player is like uh, in there? Five to ten percent? Probably. Um, and here's, here's my examples for, and I'm going to let Colin hit, well, I'll talk about my matchmaking experience. Colin can talk about his. You guys saw me stream... And two hours of gameplay, just about. And then I already played the alpha uh, prior. And I, I probably have six-ish hours total of Evolve under my belt. And the same issue that was a problem in the initial is uh, a still an issue in this one. And that is clearly matchmaking. But I'm going to talk about the chat portion of it. Because for those of you that were watching... You got to hear me and Skull Crusher talking, the only two talking in our game. And Skull Crusher was probably like 10 or 11 years old, some little kid. And, you know, I was having uh, a good time with him talking in, in the stream. Uh, but there was no one else talking. Now, there's some game mechanics that I don't remember if they were in on the PC build that we played, but marking, uh, you know, the, yeah, the monster nice. helps, marking, positioning, that's great. But nobody was fucking talking. Not one person other than Skull Crusher, this 10 or 11 year old kid. And he didn't even talk during the gameplay. Every time he was talking was after the fucking game ended in the lobby. He didn't make one call out. He didn't say the monster's here. He didn't say I'm right on his tail. He didn't say hold up. Nobody said anything, right? And this is the problem that we have with games today. Nobody talks anymore. Nobody talks unless you're in a party. So, so I don't know how they're going to overcome this, this hurdle. Your mic is on by default. It's a massive hurdle. It is a massive hurdle. And it's not a knock on, on Turtle Rock or Evolve. This is just an inherent problem now with games. I think that we got burned initially back in 2002 when Xbox had this voice chat <clears throat> shit. And we heard little kids screaming. We heard all types of racist comments. We heard... Uh, the voice mods, we heard soundboards, we heard every fucking thing in the book, and people were just like, I'm tired of that shit, I'm not going to talk, or I'm going to talk in a party, or I'm going to talk in Skype, fuck these motherfuckers. I feel like that's what people have said, 
Um, and look, big, you have people talking on PC. I guarantee you that the minor- the the majority of people, and I'm I, I bet that the PC community is talking more than the Xbox community. But I guarantee that there is by vast majority way less people talking than there should be on PC. Yeah, from what I saw, I didn't see many people talking at all. Uh, in my experience during the alpha a while back, there was no one talking at all. Like maybe one person. Uh, so yeah, I don't think it's. I still think it's just not enough. The biggest issue is that the whole point of the game really requires all four people talking. Yep. Like the entire game is built around that, and I'm sure that's how they play test because obviously it's four of them next to each other. It's how they showed at trade shows: four people next to each other, you will talk to each other. Uh, but then they don't do enough, I feel, to really push it. Like, we talked about this, I believe, when we talked about the game last, which was there really needs to be a prompt saying, hey, is your mic in? Okay. And then put them in a pool of people with mics. Because that's really the only way to address it um, at this point. There's, there's and without it, it really sucks. There's literally nothing you can do. I don't feel like people want to talk to random strangers anymore. I don't feel like they do. It happens. It, it happens on occasion. It happens. Don't get me wrong. It happens. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. It happens it doesn't way more happen often on often. PC. Like CS:GO and Dota, I've had people talk. Yeah, but I, you're just not going to get that, and I don't know why. I don't know why, other than saying all you know what I previously said about people feeling burned, people not wanting to deal with the idiocracy of of the internet. But I I don't know, man. That's that's one hurdle, right? The other hurdle is just flat out matchmaking. Um, <laughs> yes. And for those of you guys that saw, I, I switched. First off, I switched my controls. They have a bumper jumper, which I can't. <laughs> I can't wait till we get to the fucking bumper jumper discussion tonight. But they had a bumper jumper scheme for the monster and the hunters. Bumper jumper for monster and hunters. Now, when I played the game, I played it on default controls, and. Uh, Switching to Bumper Jumper was, uh, well, I think for the Hunters, it was a lot easier. But for the Monster, you know, my first Monster gameplay, I was like, whoa, I almost died in my uh, uh, level one stage. Uh, but here's the thing that I noticed. And I'm not trying to, look, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I don't need to do that. You guys already know. But when I played as a Hunter and we played with a group of four, we won. By a pretty significant margin, right? Skull Crusher got it. He died in like three minutes as the monster. Another dude uh, died. He might have gotten... I don't think he got past uh, level one either. Um, and he died. And I posted both... I posted uh, one gameplay that... Uh, you know, I might link in chat if you guys haven't seen it. And then I posted... Uh, the other gameplay will be coming. I have to space these out. Of showing this kid getting murked in three minutes. Like, it's... Half of it is me talking about me getting my my Goliath top hat. About two minutes of gameplay, and then the uh, intermission of me laughing my ass off at how fast this kid got destroyed. Um, and then when I played the the monster again, is the people. The first time I played, I was getting the controls down. I won pretty significantly. The second time, I basically slaughtered this room, <laughs> slaughtered them. Uh, it just wasn't close, and so with people not communicating, um, obviously being new to the game also has a factor in that. But uh, d- depending on whatever uh, uh, player composition you get in a room, it's going to vastly change and alter your experience. You get a shitty medic, you're done. You get a shitty trapper, you're done. You get a shitty assault, you're done. The only one I don't think that matters too much is support, maybe. But I feel like they can be a game changer as well if they're constantly putting up that shield. So, I mean, three of those (laughs) classes really, really matter. And I don't know about the support right now. So, If you get a shitty monster or a monster that's way better than the other team, then you've just thrown away 10 or 15 minutes for a gameplay (laughs) that doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? Like, if if the monster isn't balanced with the group, then it's all all pointless. Like, you have no chance of winning or you're going to stomp the shit out of them because they don't know what they're doing. Which the alpha in particular exposes really heavily because everyone's new. You know, like, the odds of getting a monster doesn't know what the fuck he's doing is pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. So, what I saw, I was watching streams just to kind of take everything in. Um, the one streamer I tuned into, I can't remember who it was. It was a big streamer. Um, but they were playing, they had three or four of them. They weren't, like, great players, but they were playing together, so they were just stopping everything. 
Uh, they had won, I think, 20-plus games in a row is what they said. Uh, and, like, no one was even coming close to winning, really. And half the time, like, they would go stomp the monster in, in stage one and just, boop, game over. And, like, that was it. And the monster's just like, well, that sucked. Uh, so they kept stomping everyone. And then finally they got matched with someone that stood up to him. Yeah, I think it was, it was Lyric. Thank you. I don't know okay. why. I was, couldn't remember Lyric. Okay. Uh, so it was his stream. Finally they got matched with this guy, the Jizz Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Lyric, the monster. With the, the jizz Lyric, wizard. Lyric versus the Jizz Wizard. Uh, and when they came in, everyone's like, oh, he's a high level. He's probably pretty good, and he's played a bit. Uh, and sure enough, he actually beat him with the Kraken. It was the first time they had lost the entire time. It was a pretty good match. Uh, and then after the match, they are kind of talking. And it was like, this is how the game is supposed to have gone. After the game, the guy's like, hey, you know, like, you guys did really good. That was the, that was the toughest challenge I've had. Uh, and then someone's like, well, how do your minds work as the Kraken? Like, oh, he does this, 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 and this. You can shoot him really easily with the assault, blah, blah, blah. So, like, they had a nice conversation after the match about what had just happened. And then they rematched him, and he went as the Goliath. And it was the closest match I've ever seen in Evolve. Came down to, like, the very last moment, the monster versus two people, and he killed them with fire breath while he was at, like, a sliver of health. Uh, and, like, the screen went black, and all the hunters thought they had won. Like, it was that close. So, like, when the things worked right and it gave that good match, it was fucking awesome. It was fun to watch. They all had a good time. You could tell everyone, like, got into serious mode after mm -hmm. that first game or midway through the first game. It was like, shit, this guy's legit. And then it's like, all right, you go over this way. You go over this way. You go over this way. We're going to split up. You need to cover this. Oh, have him over here. Like, go to the power plant. We need to trap him over in the corner. Uh, so, like, everything was working well. And when it's working well, the game is, whew. Like, I was even thinking, like, I was watching it, and we'll talk about it in a second. Uh, I was like, damn, this would probably work pretty well competitively. Um, maybe not from, a, like, an eSports perspective, but, like, hey, this is actually entertaining to watch, and it's pretty right. interesting and different, which is the biggest thing, right? It's You haven't seen anything like it. There's no real good comparison. But it took them 20 matches, 20 matches, to get someone who could fight them. And the guy that fought him, he said he had never lost as the monster. And that was the closest fight they had, was, uh, was those guys fighting. So each of them had 20-plus matches. You figure at, like, 10 to 20 min minutes a match, that's what? Pull up a calculator real quick. I'll tell you what. <laughs> 400 <laughs> minutes? 20 times. We'll do 15. 300. That's, like, five hours of play to get one good match. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So and it's not even like it's just a good match. Like the game is nearly unplayable when the teams are on balance. Like it's like you're just walking around, you know? Yeah. So I look. I I think I would have loved to see that match, and I and I agree. Um, I had the most fun playing a ball when I had four people sitting right next to me, and the monster was on the other side, and we got to play all yelling and screaming at each yep. other and uh, uh, trying to figure out how to trap the monster. Some of the things that I think uh, will evolve from the game, <laughs> evolve from the game uh, are you know, some of the, I think, tactics that we see at a, at, a, at a high level. And I think it'll be very entertaining to watch. I just don't know if it's going to have the lasting power it'll need. So you know, some of the things that I, I, I also think will play a factor in this by the way, Distillery, that snow map, Colin, I landed on that map for the first time. I was like, oh my god, this, this shit is amazing. I was looking around like, oh shit. This I don't think I saw awesome. the snow map you played. Oh my god. I saw just so the two good. other maps. I didn't see the snow map. It's Distillery. So oh, good. I'm pretty upset now. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about the content in the game. I, I don't know if it will get stale quickly. Um, I'm concerned about the number of monsters and how different they can feel. Uh, you know, we got, so we got Kraken, which can fly, does lightning. We got Goliath, with the, which is this brute. Are we going to go underwater? Um, you know, is there going to be a, like a Leviathan or something like that? And, and there's right. already one in the game that you fight, right? That's like that monster that, that, uh, is, a, 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 an NPC that's, that's in there. But, uh, you know, I don't know if this is like two week, three weeks out, like if people still be hype up on Evolve or if they'll be back on Call of Duty or whatever else. Um, so again, it kind of has the same issue as, as sun uh, like a sunset. Um, I feel like there's more there in terms of, uh, you know, people sticking around. I'm sure it's going to have a very like hardcore 
um, group of players. But uh, I'm concerned about the divergent gameplay that we'll see six months after the game releases or a year after the game releases. What What is Evolve going to look like? Um, and, and could a player just hop in and be a part of that? I don't could feel like they could. I, I feel like it's going to be a niche community. Um, but it'll be like a really passionate niche community. Um, but I feel like you really need to have like your team of hunters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Like, if you're going in, you have to have your team of hunters. And really, like at that point, you're playing against people that want to be the monster all the time. Like That's really how it has to work out. Because if you start mixing people into groups, it just doesn't work nearly as well. Right. Uh, and I don't think that'll ever really be solved uh, unless they really get in there and kind of address like how matchmaking works. And Monkman is saying, I'm telling you, Evolve needs monster versus monster. That sounds anyway. like its own game. <laughs> See, I feel like the monster isn't even really that, like... Like, the actual fighting with the monster is really spammy and just, like, you just throw everything. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like monster versus monster would just be, like, two people mashing buttons. <laughs> isn't that Monster Rampage? Is that the name of that game where you're just, like... You're talking about Ramp? You're talking about Rampage where they destroy the buildings? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so look evolve uh, at its at its best is a fantastic fucking phenomenal game uh i just i'm concerned about i'm concerned about the experience that average people are going to have and if it's going to be enjoyable and i'm very sure that they are thinking about the same things um and yep. it seems like that's something that they want to try to solve for like you know just having the fact that you know, you come into the game and your part, your mic is basically on by default is proof in and of itself that they are thinking about like, hey, this is a party game. People need to be chatting. We need to solve this this issue. Uh, and I think matchmaking is, is another one that they all are very well aware of, but uh, um, they probably don't have a really good solution for. And I, I think I talked about this before, Colin, and, and I think we've kind of had our little spats about it in the past, but you know, I always reference like, you know, it's it's humans, right? Like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the matchmaking is. It can get better to a certain degree, right? Like we can get the optimal matchmaking settings, but there's still going to be the occasional, oh man, why did we just get matched up against this guy? He's our same rank, but we completely destroyed him, right? Yeah. Like you can't account for the the 1% of the 1% of the 1% that are going to just roll everyone all but the time. But at least half my game should be competitive. You know, I like... Agree. Right now, it's like 5 to 10%, and that's unacceptable. Like, you won't sustain a community like that. There's just no way. You'll drive everyone into private matches is ultimately what's going to happen. And then you're right. still going to have a super small niche community, which I think is what is going to happen. I don't think they'll be able to avoid that. That's my two cents. I put the link in chat, by the way, to uh, the Lyric Stream. If anyone wants to check out the Jizz Wizard in action... It's like six uh, six hours into that uh, stream, and and tricks. Look, I, I I had mentioned Left 4 Dead before. I think people were asking me about it while I was actually streaming Evolve, um, and people were saying that the game is is either bad or it's going to fail. And look, I think the game is going to do well um, in terms of sales. I I just worry about the community uh, of what it's going to look like, you know, way down the line for the game. Left 4 Dead uh, is, I think the they know the recipe for success for this game. And look, we haven't seen anything like this that I can think of. So they might be onto something. So, you, you know, I, I, it's really hard to tell. Um, and obviously playing an alpha, there were some issues like disconnects and, uh, you know, random bugs that I saw now and again. But yeah, I couldn't find a match at work. It sucked. Yeah, it was. I mean, there's some things that they have with some connection issues. I'm hoping those are resolved. By the time, I guess, the beta, they're going to have a beta by the time that comes around. Um, you know, I, I, I think the game can can do well. I think the, I think it can surprise some people. Um, but Beta's going to have customs, by the way. Beta's oh, going to have customs. Custom uh, so you'll, you'll be able to play against a friend as the monster. Mm. I, don't, I don't know if you'll be able to tune settings or not, but you'll be able to get five people in a room, and one of them is going to be the monster. So let's, let's talk about this from a hypothetical competitive gaming uh uh thing this is obviously i think you would have a five-man team right yeah. you have your four hunters and your best monster player i say you could do a four-man team and just nominate one of them to also play monster okay so but i think it's way cooler if you have a team of hunters and a monster 
and a monster, right? So, um, from a competitive standpoint, if you get two high level teams, I think, uh, or high level groups of players playing against each other, I feel like this is one of the more enjoyable, uh, streamable games that is going to be out there. Yeah. Um, I can't really say the same for some of the hell some of the shooters that we have that are really popular right now. They're, some of them are really hard to watch, um, but I feel like because of we're looking at it a little differently, I feel like the pacing is 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 at a point where um, you know it, it kind of builds up, right? You build up to that climactic point every single time. Um, and there's cool and, narrative to it, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's easy. It's easy to to tell the story. Yep. about what's happening but is that story the same when you do it 20 times in a row you know what i mean like is it does it get too samey is this are the tactics the same is there lots of depth to it uh, i guess it's stuff like that which would have to be revealed over time um, right but i think it's pretty cool like you can talk about like what the initial insertion drop plans are for the team like how they're going to spread out you if you knew the team you could say how they usually hunt and then how the monster might be trying to play with that you know like mm -hmm. to their advantage like there's a lot of different metagaming type stuff you could do around it and then monster uh, selection cool. is also a thing too so yep which is funny because when uh lyric was streaming the guy tore him up with kraken it was the first time they had seen the kraken then after the match he's like yeah you can blow up the things by shooting at them they're like oh okay so the next time they selected different hunters and they're like all right we're, we're good we're ready for the kraken now and then he picked the goliath and it was like <laughs> oh <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, like that would play into it quite a bit. You have to kind of pick flexible stuff. Um, again, if the balance was there, but like in the end, like it'd be an actually a really interesting game to watch. Although there isn't much of like an individual skill component uh, from like a shooting perspective. It's more of like it's strictly team positioning and tactics. Yeah, I mean the monster is a big target, right? So it's not like you're yeah. gonna get skill shots per se. Um, I guess the only one would be like if if you have this dude that can consistently uh, paint him with that uh, uh, was it like a trank uh, or something thing? like oh the yeah dark, yeah so whatever um, I you know I've been uh, obviously I've been reading a lot of what you guys have have uh, said in uh, the chat seems like pretty much everyone has kind of conveyed some of the same concerns and fears. Um, you know, I'm really interested to in what people have to say on YouTube about Evolve. If you played it on, obviously it wasn't working on PS4 until yesterday. Yeah. So they extended it to Tuesday for them specifically, I think. Um, so if you played it, what do you think about it? Uh, is this a game that you're going to purchase after playing it? Um, let us know. I'd, I'd be really interested to hear what people have to say about uh, Evolve after after getting their fill. Um I guess I could put those two things in. We'll talk about those in Q and A. So let's go ahead and hit Call of Duty. Okay. Advanced Warfare. Oops. Advanced Warfare impressions. Ah. So before we begin, I just want to say. Xbox dropped the ball on the downloads. Did you download it off Xbox or did you get the disc? I downloaded it off Xbox. How long did it take you? So, I, I got a day zero because it really did matter yep. the same price. I got a day yep. zero, started my download, and it was stuck at 9%. And I was like, <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Stopped it, restarted it, came back, it was at 42% or something like that. Um... And then that was on Sunday night, and then I left for work. Uh, wait, is that what is that what happened? I left for work on no, I didn't leave for work. We left to go work out. Is what we did. And when I came back, I was like, man, this still this the fucking thing still isn't done. Yeah. And um, and then when I came back Monday morning, it had just finished. So I woke up at five. And it was like at 95% or something like that. And then right before I started streaming on Monday, it basically... It was insane. Worked. It was I, moving like 1% every 45 minutes. I don't know. And I have a 200 down connection. <laughs> Absolutely insane. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that. Apparently, uh, It's Face and PSN had the same problems. 
So all of the next gen crumbling under the weight of COD. Terrible. Terrible. We're we're not ready for discless, man. We're not ready for disc only. Clearly, we're not. That's what it showed. What, what happened to all those? Could you imagine if all the people that bought the disc at a store also had to download overnight? Oh man, we would be. No one would have gotten it. No one would have been on live. No, there's another error that I'm having though with the game in itself. It's like the I've seen other people talking about. It. I actually tweeted about it. Um, it's like well, hold on, let me see. It's called a uh, error setting persistent data. Given, uh, I think its integer value is too large uh, to fit in a byte. C hmm. console. So there's a there's like a thing on Reddit that's probably gotten upvoted a significant portion now since more people have the game uh, since when I played it, and uh, that seemed to have fixed it. But the error still pops up. Anyway, talking about the game. So let's just let's just say initial impressions in uh, the multiplayer. I haven't played the campaign, which I, I actually plan on playing. So I'm not going to talk anything about the campaign because I have not played it. Don't spoil it for me. If you spoil it, I will fuck you up. Kevin Spacey sells you out to the government. He is the government. <laughs> it's a corporation owner. <laughs> uh, so weapons, Colin. Let's start there. Yeah, I mean, I, you, were, you were going to general impressions. First. Oh, oh, okay. General impressions. General impressions. Is, the, it's the most fun I've had on COD since early Modern Warfare 2. But I still haven't as much fun as I had on Titanfall. But it's still like a solid game. I actually enjoyed my time playing it last night for three or four hours. Yeah. Okay. Okay. General impressions for me. Like Collins, I haven't had this much fun in a Call of Duty game since Black Ops 1 for me. Uh, I didn't like Modern Warfare 2 that much. Uh, but Black Ops, that was a fun game for me. And, uh, you know, I'm having a tough time trying to rate, like, you know, everyone has this rating of their favorite Call of Duty game. I don't know where to place this one. It's definitely better than Ghosts and Modern Warfare 3 by leaps and fucking bounds uh, better than that. And so I think that they uh, got that little tarnish feel off. Uh, it's different. It's fun. I like the movement aspects of it. Uh but yeah, it's, it's it's good. So, with that being said, general impressions out of the way. Oh, how about them weapons, though? It's pretty cool how they kind of took a futuristic twist on some of the weapons. I wish that more of the weapons had that kind of same twist to them. Um, like even the laser, the laser gun is basically a machine gun that shoots really fast that has a laser imagery. Imagery, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, like, there's some pretty unique future weapons in there, which I thought was pretty cool. Your camera just froze on my screen. Oh, uh, yeah, it did. Hold on. <laughs> Look at Colin's face. <laughs> I know, it's like... <laughs> Got that Colin face. It's your camera, doll. I'm getting it. Need a relaunch. Uh... Bye. <laughs> My cam girl software. <laughs> 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 Alright, so I'll go ahead and go while Colin resets. Um, weapons for me, I'm going to go in this very similar direction as Colin. I am, ex I am happy that they decided to add some type of futuristic weaponry to the game. I... Don't feel like the lasers are as strong as I thought they should be, other than the Hammer of Dawn. I'm calling it the Hammer of Dawn. Hammer of Dawn. <laughs> it's, it's like, I forgot what it's called. Vortex, Vort of something. It's whatever, orbital thing. Uh, but it's the Hammer of Dawn. So, uh, I, I like it. Um, I like a lot of the little gadgets that you have. The exosuit is awesome as part of that weapon set. Um, you know, being able to shoot the grenades. I'm still kind of learning the arc of the grenades because I'm used to, like, the animation, the hand animation that you see when you throw a grenade kind of feels a lot more natural than shooting a grenade out. Um, it's cool, so, but it's really hard to get used to. And yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't go very far. Yeah, so that's something that I'm, I'm trying to adjust to, like, mentally. And seeing the trajectory of it, it's kind of throwing me off because I'm just used to that hand animation. Um... The I mean the rest of the weapons all feel very codish. Uh, 
you know the the assault rifles right now are ripping it up uh, from what i can tell uh the ak-12 specifically is what it seems like is the choice uh the weapon of choice although that four round burst uh assault rifle that i unlocked today this morning is seems really good um i can't i can't get a feel for um the pistols all the pistols oh and why is your camera all the way oh i'm getting it i thought it was just cutting off no should be good um now. But uh, I, I can't get a feel for all of the pistols. There's one specifically. Have you tried the, the default like pistol? Have you shot it? No, actually, I haven't shot the default pistol. You should shoot it because it's it's like the definition of pea shooter is that that like that is in the dictionary. When you look in there, that weapon right there is there because I've like shot it and I've been like I've hit gotten five, six hit markers. I'm like, what the? And it also sounds pathetic. It sounds like the worst gun I've ever heard. Like the worst gun you've ever heard? It's up there, dude. No, seriously. For the production value that goes into this game, like that gun doesn't sound good at at, at all. It's it shoots odd. It has a weird sound to it. I I'm just like, "What?" Now that that uh I think it's the called the K KW1 something like that that uh basically one it's shot. like a Magnum, the one shot. Oof. Now that one is awesome. That's I think, it's, I think it's based on range. It's two shot at some ranges, right? Yeah, that is great, it's fantastic. But the uh, that other pistol man is just uh, the knifing is also different too. So in terms of uh, there's no like lunge unless there's a perk for it, but there's no like lunge, uh, kind of like grab, like it traditionally was. Yeah, um, and it feels like the range on it is significantly shorter too, and it, I think it has to do with the speed of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's I think they are doing some things in there, you know, because um, like I keep I am spamming the shit out of the movement stuff. We'll talk about that in a second, but like I'm getting close range all the time, and I keep wanting to like dash then swing, but like there's no lunge ever after you dash. Yeah, like you have to be on them to get a hit. Yeah. But sometimes you get a crazy lunge, like if you're just playing normally. So I, I think there's some weird stuff going on to keep you from doing that currently. I don't know. Whatever it is, I've noticed it. And, and, and uh, I had the issue. Hold on. Hold on. I think we jumped a little t- bit too, uh, too far ahead. Although, I guess we could mention it with the, the movement. Okay, I'll just wait for the movement portion. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I was just pressing the wrong buttons uh, when I was trying to melee and it was just throwing me off. I kept crouching. Like, people were fucking cracking up because I would run up to someone. I'd be point blank. And then, I mm-hmm. look, I got a kill, right? Like, I'm behind the dude. He doesn't see me. I crouch. I'm like, oh, man. I'm just getting ready and for I, Halo. And then, and then I panic. It's like I crouch, and then I hit, like, the bumper button, and then I hit, like, the trigger, and I fire, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm dead. He turns around, nice me. And that happened probably, like, 20 times. Uh, before Destiny uh, button configuration got out of my mind and I got more into Call of Duty uh, tactical uh, specific uh, control scheme. So with that being said, talking about the control schemes and uh, this leading into movement, Colin, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you, wait, can I actually, can I, can we preview your, your little, (laughs) you can show it if you want. Yes. It's pretty, it's pretty rough. Colin showed me this shit. I got, I went nuts, man. I'm still working on the techniques. I went nuts. You guys know yeah, Colin yeah. is the movement master, and what this is this is some early gameplay from you, right? Like, it's like two or three hours of playing. That okay. was last night. And I didn't. I would. I would say, what am I? I'm like four hours, four and a half hour, five hours in. And but what I mean, from, he's doing in here from, from the get go, I was like straight movement. Like I didn't care. Yeah. I just wanted to get something I could shoot while I move. And then I'd run with the movement. So like that's all I did for the last three hours. All right. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can switch this over to be better because it doesn't have the same view. Um, we'll go to monitor actually. That might be better for you guys. Uh, it's this one. Oh, it's not responding. Don't you crash on me. Thank you. Thank you for not crashing. 
thought we were gonna crash there. All right, so this is Skyless. Move. How do I get this to disappear? Yeah. This is from his OneDrive. Allow. And I'm gonna shut up. Securing Alpha. Oh my god, every time I see it, dude, you just fucking disrespected him. He got completely disrespected. I have not I have not seen anything like that so far. And I, I've had some good moves, but I have not I have not disrespected anyone like that. I don't and we determined that uh this person just, he just gave up in that corner. Like, he just, <laughs> he just, he just gave up. Like, he didn't know where you were. What's funny is you can kind of see him like, all right, he shot me from over there. And then like two seconds later, he's looking over there, but then I'm already <laughs> on the like, side. He's like over here and you're like over there. He's like, wait, where'd he go? And he was dead. That shit was nasty. Yeah. So like, it's moments like that where it's like, oh shit, this is not COD anymore. Like, this is something else entirely, and it's fun. But for, for that clip, there's about 10 deaths of me just charging across the map and getting picked off by rifles. <laughs> right. So it's like, it's really it's really weird how you have to kind of pick your timing in fights to be able to do that kind of stuff. Um, but we'll see. I, I still have some perks to unlock and stuff that can make it a bit better as far as just all-out aggression movement. But I do think that at high levels, that shit's not going to be possible, unfortunately. Yeah. But so, I think you'll get to see little pieces of it, which I think is pretty cool. Yes. There are glimmers of Titanfall in this game. And, uh, you know, before I go on my movement, uh, uh, I guess, discussion with this, I, I, I have to say, for anyone that's praising this game, and this is kind of hitting on what Hulk said on his, on his Twitter tirade, <laughs> if, you're, if you're, and I, I, we mentioned this before the show, like, if you are all up in Titanfall's multiplayer, like, this is the shit, this is the best thing I've ever played, like, where the fuck were you at when Titanfall came out? Like, Titanfall's movement is better. Is better. Just flat out better. It's, it's objectively fluid. better. Yeah. It's just overall 100% better. Everything is better about Titanfall's movement system compared to Call of Duty's uh, Advanced Warfare. And I like Advanced Warfare's movement, but when you compare it to Titanfall, it's like <laughs> night and day better. Yeah. It's more fluid. It's, I won't say it's easier. But it is, it allows you, I think, more capabilities to do exactly what we saw Skyless do right there at a more frequent pace, right? And I think that also has to do with their health system. It's just better. Um, and I can't stand seeing these this, this like groupthink mentality around this fucking game, um, just the franchise in itself, where this is the shit, this is the... This is the best thing since whatever that I've ever played. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you were shitty on Titanfall? Like, because it yeah. didn't have enough game, guns for you and you want this shit? Talking about the movement is all... It's like, what the fuck, man? That pisses me off. That's what pisses me off. I, I, gotta, I, I, gotta, I gotta cool back down that we can get on this. But yeah, that pisses me off. Alright? Anyway, back on movement. The, the really... The thing that, that gets under my skin the most... Is that they don't have a, a bumper jumper scheme? Why it's is so, so why weird. is there no bumper jumper scheme? It's really strange they didn't make one. Really strange. I, really strange to me. I can't. I need to get a scuff. I need to get a scuff to even be able to play. Tricks, the bots, the bots didn't matter though. Like if you played in a high level game, the bots didn't matter. <laughs> they didn't matter. I'm talking about pro players. Pro players that were shitting on Titanfall. The bots didn't matter at a high level play. So that's not an argument that I'm willing to sit there and be like, I'm not even entertaining that. They didn't matter. The bots did not matter. So that's that's not even something that, like I said, I'll entertain. Uh, the there's, there's no Xbox One Saber tooth yet, 
right there's no saber tooth right so that's definitely a factor with the no bumper jumper thing that's why i said scuff scuff is definitely the 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 sure go-to here in terms of trying to take uh, take your game to the next level but this is i mean it's easily solvable by having a bumper jumper scheme and i don't understand like why it's not there change that left exo ability to a and i'll just tap that instead of activating it with the left bumper that's the other thing is like not only are you going off to hit a but clicking the left stick at a right angle is super awkward too <laughs> like having to do that for the side dashes yeah man this is strange like <laughs> bumper jumper could have made it so much better because then you'd have bumper for jump then you'd be able to use a for your dashes for the side dash and stuff be way better right way and better. tricks were you playing by yourself here's here's a question you had a 3kd against other players were you playing by yourself were you playing with the team and did you play any matches like you can't you can't be talking about that you know you know so that's not even something that you sh you should even be like wait i need to question this what am i actually talking about here talking about matchmaking dude <laughs> talk about matchmaking right so yeah i mean we we play matches like the bots don't matter bots don't matter um the uh, talking about the the scuff the the ability to have that uh you know dashing off that or um having the exos be programmed to the back whatever the case may be to get that to bumper jumper is definitely the optimal thing now talking about the just like the movement system itself one of the things that i feel like when I when I when I make the comparison to Titanfall and talking about its fluid movement is that it's very like linear, it's it's straight line movement or horizontal right left and right. There's a little bit of mid air control. Um, if you have two dashes in a row, you know you you do the jump right, you double okay. jump, and then you you can jump in the air to your left, and then you can kind of quickly backpedal or move to the right or move to the left while you're in the air. But you don't really re want to stay up in the air that long because you die so quickly. Your accuracy sucks. Yes, that on that that too. Um, Which is why I'm running shotgun because it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to. I might try to do some SMG stuff here pretty soon. Yeah, but, that's it. I need to try that. Um, uh, the the one game I played, I was on the ground mostly. Uh, but one of the things that I did notice with the movement is that on the ground. What we saw in your gameplay with the the side dashing, that is probably the optimal, and that's what I'm figuring out slowly. And I was telling you um, that uh, right before the show is like when I got to hour five, I started to do the dash movement that Colin was doing, um, and the, the gameplay I showed you guys um, in almost all of my encounters. Like I had talked about initially. And we'll get to the spawns here in a second. But I talked about initially when I was playing, as I was playing, like, man, the spawns are so crazy. I get hit by one bullet. I feel like I don't have time to react. But now I find myself, like, as soon as I take damage, I'm dashing to the left or dashing to the right. And it took five hours of me, like, mechanically sound, like, getting that, boom, I get hit, dash to the left, dash to the right. And it's like, that. that's how I'm saving myself. Now, it's not jumping in the air. It's not going prone. It is dashing to the left or dashing to the right. Now... Some people, and by some I mean fuck the majority of, of Call of Duty players I've I've now played against have uh, have this same mentality right now is they start to get into an engagement and the first thing they do is drop prone and I feel like yeah. in this game that's probably going to get you killed uh, eventually it's a lot versus slower. just daf dashing yes it's slower it's slower than usual um, so I'm hoping at the high levels of play. We're probably going to see players dashing, which is actually kind of has me excited to see this game played high at a high level of play versus going prone. Um, so we'll see a lot more <laughs> movement. And the good thing about this, and this, this is before I get into the spawn system uh, over on Colin, you can kind of hit on movement uh, some more if you want. But the good thing about Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, including this type of movement system is in their game is that it benefits uh, Titanfall. I think Titanfall benefited the community because it had a, a lot of buzz around it. Uh, but it, it benefits every other shooter after this that mimics this movement because this game is going to get put in the spotlight uh, and it's going to have one of the largest shooter, if not the largest shooter, uh, prize pool and esports following 
um, that we're going to see for a while until the next Call of Duty. And uh, it's going to have a movement system that is basically what we wanted for the, like the last fucking 10 years almost. Um, not, not quite there, but it, it's almost there. So, uh, you know, I feel pretty good about watching it. Um, I don't necessarily know if I, I, I know I don't have the time to sit down and play uh, this game for hours and hours and hours to be one of the top. So that is out of the question. We might play some GBs or something like that, but that's about it. Yeah, I think between Advanced Warfare, Titanfall, and Destiny, I think that developers will be a bit less scared to do lots of movement on consoles, uh, which I think is probably the biggest takeaway you'll see from the shooters this year. Uh, when you look like two or three years down the road as the influence these games had, I think you'll see that people aren't as afraid to do crazy movement uh, on a console. Or before it was like, oh, if you do that, then people can't shoot. You know, PC games, the only ones that can do movement, uh, so and so on and so forth. Right. But like, it's worked on console. Uh, there's ways to make it work. Yep. Yep. Um, so, talking about some of the other things that I saw in the game, just from a general uh, gameplay standpoint, you know, uh, the thing that bothers me the most right now in this game, someone had mentioned earlier that they have not seen a lot of kill streaks. I have seen very few. I have not seen a whole lot of like people going like 40 or 50 and O or anything like that. Yeah. The spawns are fucking all over the place. And Colin, you said you played in a little bit different environment than me. Yeah, I played domination. Um, it wasn't that bad, but look, dude, I was getting shot in the back. I shit you not, man. I probably 70, 80% of my deaths have been someone shooting me in the goddamn back. And it is so annoying because it is so fast. I can't react or I couldn't, I should say, I couldn't react until even, uh, I would say once I got the dashing down, most of my encounters were in the front, but you know, map maps definitely have a play in how people are facing knowing map awareness in general has, has a play in that. So I feel like maybe once I get 10 hours under my belt, I'm going to get shot less and less and less as, as time goes on in my back. But man, it is infuriating right now trying to get the spawn system down. It's like people, boom. And I think, look, I think if you die a certain number of times, they're actually putting you next to, like if you're, if I die four times in a row, my fourth death is near the person that just killed me. You I think feel so? like it's happening. I feel like it's happening at a pretty frequent pace where I just die. Oh shit, I'm in the same location. I just died nearly. So I just run over there and shoot at the person. I don't know. Ghost tried that, and it was awful. And I think that I think it, it's in, dude. I, th- I think they took it out because Ghost is on every life. It's either it's either in or it's 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 just spawning you wherever the fuck it wants to spawn you. I just I don't know. So that's that's probably the, the my number one gripe right now with uh, Advanced Warfare. It probably has to be the uh, the spawning system. And, and again, I have not played all the game modes. I need to play Domination. I need to play Uplink. I think Uplink would probably be base to base. Domination is probably centered around the points you control. I saw some Uplink stuff that made me pretty upset. You can pass the ball all the way across the map. Like you just look at a teammate, tap left trigger, and it like in a straight line. Like no arc whatsoever. We're in the future, Colin. There are no arcs in the future, except for <laughs> grenades. Just as a fan of Halo 4's Ricochet, like that makes me a bit upset. Because it takes the skill out, you know? And like they were literally just waiting for it to spawn, double jumping, throwing across the map to their teammate who jumped in over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can Anyways. see that. Um, so, let me see. We're, we're, I have the exoskeleton on here, and I'm trying to, I didn't add any notes to that. Just, I guess, talking about the exoskeleton in general. There's 710? 10 abilities in all? Is that right? I don't know all of them. It might be 7. I think a um, few of them are like limited to uh, co-op. Co-op. So, look, the exoskeleton reminds me a lot of Crisis. It's uh, straight out of Crisis. It, I mean, there's... I, I wouldn't say that it's by any means innovative, uh, but it is certainly a fresh um, jolt of, of energy for uh, Call of Duty and what it does. Um, invisibility... Uh, the cloaking, the stem, uh, which I'm kind of actually disappointed how the stem works. It's like hardly anything. It it's, har- it's hardly noticeable. 
Yeah, it doesn't feel as good as Titanfalls for sure. Titanfalls felt amazing. Yeah, I needed to get a, you know, <laughs> I just had to, get, had to get my hits. But so, I don't feel the same way with AW. So I mean, I've kind of abandoned that. The speed one feels good. Um, I just unlocked the one where you can hover. I'm just gonna be flat out honest with you guys. There is no way in hell. I would hover. And I said the same shit on Destiny. Like, whoever picks hover as an ability has to be stupid. Like, why would you be... You just don't know know how to combo it, Kale. I have to call... Gotta gotta hover and then dash the other way and then drop to the ground. I guess. With your uh, overdrive so you can get that smash in. Yep. So, I guess I have to call out some Destiny people that do this. Who the fuck thinks it's a good idea to go Sunsinger, float in the air, active, while you're flaming on fire in the air... Why do you think that's a good idea? Like, why are you sitting there floating in the air, flaming, so everyone on the other team can see you? Yeah. <laughs> Same concept. Like, you're playing a shooter. You're going to get picked off. It makes no sense to have hover as an ability to me. That's kind of a wasted space. And anyone that picks it, I feel like is an idiot. Sorry. <laughs> that just seems dumb. Uh, so I would not recommend that one. I feel bad if you if you are. Uh, cause you're going to get shot down really quick. Um... Colin, I mean, did you? What do you think about the the nades, the EXO? Like, there's a bunch of different nades in there. Did you see all of them? I haven't used them all. Okay, I used this. I've only used the frag and the Semtex. Sim- Semtex, okay. Semtex is pretty good. Uh, I've used Semtex, Stun, Frag. Uh, there's one that has a multiple. It's like, it's like a, a roulette roll. I can't remember yeah. what it's called. Well, it's you can like, select it, I think, right? Yeah. And you shoot it, and it just randomly picks which one. So, I, I don't know how, how like how it looks. I thought you could select them. I don't think it's random. Can you? I, I think it's random. Them. Well, I guess that would be kind of cool then. To have all three. My big thing is I just wish that the grenades fired faster. Like uh, the time from when I push the button to when like the arm comes up and it shoots is pretty damn long. So you can't like use it in sequence or anything. You have to like deliberately want to do it. Right. Like that's the only thing I've had an issue with the grenades, but I haven't tried. Like a few of them seem kind of uh, sci-fi. Um. Other than that, I mean, look, like I said, I, I feel like multiplayer is solid. Uh, maps are pretty good. Um, overall, I feel like they utilize for the most part. There's one map. I think it's Detroit. I don't like Detroit. That map is awful. Lots of small maps. Nice. Awful. There's no giant shit. There's no uh, Stonehenge maps from on Coats or whatever the uh, map was. I can't think of any big maps, but uh, you know I haven't played Ground War. I'm kind of interested to see how that plays. Although some of the maps being small as to the spawn issues, I think because it's like you spawn, you do a double jump and a dash, and you're in the middle of the map. You know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. So, you know, the action is pretty fast. Uh, dying is frequent, it seems like, right now. Uh, obviously, I can't wait to see how I'm playing, uh, you know, 10, 10 hours into the game. I also need to play with my teammates. I need to see what that structure is like. Uh, you know, Tense, some rank. Yeah, Tense played a lot of Call of Duty. Uh, if Callie gets it, oh, my God. If Callie North gets it, he played a shit ton of Call of Duty. Uh, that will be fun. Obviously, Skyless, Wraith. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think Orange is going to play. Um, and XL probably won't play. So Zeno, Zeno might play a little bit. So we might get some games in with him. So I, you know, I think it'll be fun to play as a, as a team. I'm looking forward to getting some of that gameplay in. Uh, some of the last things I want to mention is, is I, I guess with the weapons, uh, I got to tr- backtrack a little bit. Um, I'm really interested to see uh, the bolt action sniper and that that pistol that I was using in tandem. I had, I had one game and it was a glimmer. I felt like I was playing Destiny with like just sniping people constantly, but I need a different scope. I need the ACOG scope, I think, which should have less zoom. Uh, but those two combinations, man, are pretty nasty. Pretty nasty. Um, so it's it's uh, <laughs> a race as ex teammates. Yes, the VBI VBI brethren uh, <laughs> across the pond. So yeah, I mean it's. It's good. I think a lot of people are, for the most part, enjoying it. Uh, the AK-12, Major, thank you for saying. The AK-12 has been the fucking go-to weapon that I've seen in, in uh, I was going to say Crucible. 
in uh, multiplayer. It seems it's, like all the assault rifles are kind of above everything else. Yeah, yeah. And I ran, I ran. Like I said, I've been running a lot of stuff. I tried SMGs. I tried this full auto shotgun that was trash, trash. Uh, I tried uh, a sniper. I used some pistol. I, I did all four of the um, assault rifles, the AK-12, I think, and then the it might be called the IMR-8, something like that, uh, which is the four round versus best in damage in its class for assault assault rifles. It's it's good four shot burst, but it's it's kind of like <coughs> a hair trigger, so you just boo boo tap it real quick, and it, it feels like it's shooting full full auto, um, and. Uh, Shit, what else did I use? I used one more thing. I can't remember what it was. Oh, uh, the lasers. I used the full auto uh, laser, which felt like garbage. Um, on top of that, you move so slow. Colin, you move so slow. Yeah, I know. I couldn't true. take it. I couldn't take it, man. Uh, and then I used the semi auto um, uh, laser beam I don't, I don't remember the names of either, either of those i feel like the the heavy um the full auto one would be good if you were in the air trying to track people and do the jumping around like tracking people while you're flying around but again no bumper jumper sucks with that um and the fact that uh the weapon doesn't feel like it damages you a whole lot it feels like you might get picked off so kind of underwhelming for it to be a heavy weapon you move slower and then it not kill as as quickly as it could so those are the, the things i wanted to comment on with the weapons because i used a whole bunch of them uh while i've been streaming yeah. uh consistently doing really well with the assault rifles yeah that seems to be the way to go do you guys get any good supply drop weapons i got that full auto shotgun and i got uh the semi-auto uh, laser beam. I'm only got a few drops so far. Uh, it seems like you really just want damage. It <laughs> like, is. Damage on almost any of them is going to be the way to go. Colin, you got any last words you want to say about the game? No, I think I just need to play more at this point. Uh, still need to check out ranked. I only played Domination last night, so I haven't played any of the modes really. Curious to see how competitive handles things. Already all the ban shit threads. <laughs> Are they like ban movement? <laughs> ban jumping, ban dashing. No, there's been some questionable ones though when I was browsing through the threads. Just you need to do what you did like Titanfall. You remember you you called out that one dude that uh <laughs> what did he ask the ban? I can't remember what it was. Uh, yeah, STEM. Uh, could have been. Oh yeah, I think it was STEM. Yeah. Because we were like, how could you ban an ability? There's only three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think that was right. Um. So. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, obviously seeing what everyone else has to say about the game, and we are still in the honeymoon period. <clears throat> So, you know, a lot of impressions will change, as they always do, about two weeks from now, three weeks from now, I think people will be like, something is shit. This game is shit. I hate it. Um, oh, some man, people are already it's so overpowered. That. Yeah. So, it's only a matter of time. Initial impressions, though, are our assault rifles are OP. Spawning is kind of jacked up. I'm hoping some people will discover some movement tech, you know? Like, stuff that exploits the movement system and makes it better. I think that'd be kind of cool if people can find that kind of shit. And it's possible, game. considering how much stuff they have in the game. Yep. I'm finding the side dashes to be the best, man. Someone needs to find strafe jumping. <laughs> Some way to gain momentum and keep it. That'd be nice. Be nice. That would be real nice. Uh, so, you... sorry, go ahead. I was going to say with that, I'm going to change topics. Uh, I'm looking at, I'm going to take questions um but we're going to talk about a couple of different things there's some quick throwaway stuff. stuff we can talk about star citizen yeah we can talk about gta all right starting q a yeah all right so gta 5 announced first person mode for ps4 
Xbox One and PC, and they also announced 4K support for PC for anyone who has a insane enough rig to be able to run that shit and a 4K monitor. <laughs> like, that'd be cool. Uh, but the first person stuff seems pretty interesting. I'm actually more interested in picking up the game now than I was before because of the first person. It's it's completely changes the game. Yeah, like most of my complaints about GTA are about like the really stupid targeting system where it's just like you just tap and you're on them. Uh, so like first person would really change things. And it makes you more like you're, you are the psychopath tre- uh, Trevor versus you're just like watching it from a third person, you know? Right. Uh, that could be kind of weird. I'm... Look, I, I got hype. I saw the trailer. Uh, we watched it on a, a huge TV um, at work, actually. We watched it on, like, a big 60-inch. Um, and it looked amazing, man. It looked awesome. Also, support for 30-person races and stuff in multiplayer. They're cranking up the numbers, man. Yeah. This it, it should be good, man. No limitations. Um, well, <laughs> no limitations. Oh. Less limitations. Fewer. Fewer. Less, yeah. The uh, the other one we have, Star Citizen, showed their FPS module, uh, which was pretty early, I think, is what you would say. Like, they didn't even have some animations in there. Yeah. Uh, but they showed it at PAX Australia, I believe. And uh, it was it was all right. I all right. thought that it's it rough. looked rough, yes. There were some things that I was like, whoa, that looks really weird. I'm waiting to see like how the how it, it looks when they when that module is done and put together with more modules to make a one model m- module game. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of curious when they're gonna start piecing these together because that seems like a lot of work. Yes, and lots of design systems, right? Yes, with a high potential of fucking everything up. I'm waiting for them to merge all those branches into one big branch. That'll be that'll be the day of reckoning. Uh, for Star Citizen. Yeah. The one cool thing about uh, that video was when they got into the low grab room and they were floating around fighting. Yeah. I, I thought that was pretty awesome. It had like all of the tropes of like a bad FPS reveal. It had people walking in formation. It had military uh, jargon, pseudo commands and talk, chatter. It had like it had a uh, scripted <laughs> It had a scripted encounter sequence where opponents were going to show in certain areas. It had guys missing shots on people right in front of them. It had everything that you'd expect from a really subpar reveal of an FPS. You're laughing because you know it's true. All that was there. Every bit. Uh, listen, Star Citizen fan. Hell, did you see when the guy was right in front of him? Star and he Citizen just unloaded fan. his entire clip. <laughs> And then, like, he still didn't kill him, but he was clearly supposed to kill him at that part. So it swaps cameras to someone else. It just does, like, a quick fade. <laughs> and then it comes in on someone else. It's like, no, he did not kill him. That guy did not die. Clearly. Trick said, all the players are complete trash. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hey, uh, uh, Star Citizen fans, I know that you guys... Uh, are pretty passionate about the game, and uh, I'm sorry for any uh, pain and suffering that Colin, Colin has caused I'm you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, oh, I think shit. the I think the average star citizen consumer isn't an FPS player as well. I think that's probably true. Yeah, so they don't even know. Like they probably are like, oh They're man, like, that, oh wow, that, that guy's really great. That guy's really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay let me stop all right i said like the idea of having like people in your fleet or whatever that are fps specialists going into <laughs> kind of assassinate the other players is kind of cool <laughs> if that's how it is i have no idea <laughs> it's bang. another fraud citizen highlight <laughs> That's murder, no. <laughs> oh, Colin, we're gonna have every week, man. We're gonna have like one or two fanatics going after you. I feel bad because like Sin was in here earlier. He, I think he left. But yeah, we didn't talk about it earlier, no. He'll catch the stream and be salty with me again. 
<laughs> for like the fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Master Chief Collection Frag Live stream next week. Maybe. I'm still trying to figure out if I'll have a copy on Tuesday. I don't know. Also, I don't think it has like the same allure as some new game that hasn't been seen. It's really I, similar. I mean, yeah, I, I don't understand. You already know what you're getting. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They've done a lot of reveal stuff. That said, I'm really excited for it. Did you see the campaign trailer? I didn't. Oh, my. Oof. Prepare to be mind blown. Wait, is it a cinematic? It was the cinematic trailer. I think I might have saw it. I might have saw it. It's one of the best uh, teaser things. No, I linked it to you. I don't know if you want to show it or not. Since, you know, the things. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass. I won't show it. Okay. Uh... That's not even the right, not even the right one I linked you to. Whatever. Tricks. I question if those players had thumbs. <laughs> How do you not get a copy if you work for certain affinity? I probably will. I'm just trying to figure out when. I don't know if I'll have it on Tuesday. Any thoughts on rumored Halo 5 movement with dashing and double jumps? I'm not going to comment on any of that because you know what? If they change it, the formula too much, I feel like... Everyone in their mama uh, from the call or the call of duty, the Halo community is going to be like all upset. Let's see, did you guys check out the Battle Cry gameplay teaser? Big, I didn't, but I did play Battle Cry at PAX, and Ian actually had told me that the build that they played that I was playing was pretty old. So I have to check out that uh, that that uh, teaser. Halo Killer, can I message you about? Master Chief Collection, sure. Message away. Major Black Halo. Colin got hype. What? It's very rare that Colin gets hype. The last time I saw That's Colin not hype even was Titanfall. Either. Titanfall was the last time Colin has ever been hype. Probably was. I was pretty hyped about Master or uh, Mike Tyson mysteries. You were the initial oh, wait, reveal. Wait, wait, I take that back. This week, wait, no, you said that you weren't that hyped for Interstellar. Yep. So I can't even say that you were hyped for that. I think there was a movie recently though that I was pretty hyped for. John Wick. I, I get hype. I just keep my hype contained, and I try to limit it so I don't let out all the hype and like become a bandwagon hyper. Don't want to be one of those guys. Those are the worst. The bandwagon hypers that don't learn from their mistakes in the past, the worst. Me, I, I've, I've been down that road. <laughs> the bandwagon hypers buy the same game over and over again. Yeah, exactly. While simultaneously complaining about it two months later when it becomes bandwagoning to anti-hype. Right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> bandwagoning to anti-hype. That was a new <laughs> one. <laughs> Otherwise known as haters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. If Halo game sucks, Team Beyond forms will explode. I don't know how it can suck. Like They have they have an all-star cast. It's a... It's a I mean, oh, you're talking about the next Halo. But, like, Master Chief Collection, it can't possibly fail. Right. Like, realistically, like, it's a collection of stuff that people have already played before that they loved. All packed into one. Armadillo says, what's going to happen when you play Halo, a slow game compared to Titanfall and Advanced Warfare that you both played? Halo is just different. It's more of a tactical uh, and more aim dependent, I guess. There's, there's, and, and it has a structure different. to it. Like, no, let's not forget, like, we've played Halo before. Yeah, we've, we've played everything. <laughs> neither of us are bad Halo players, so we, it's not like it's going to be... We've played like every shooter for the last... Eight years at least, nine years. I would say so. Like People since I was a lot of shooters. Since I was like fourteen, I've played like every shooter that's going on console, and most of the big ones on uh, PC as well. So like, 
playing a different game is not going to surprise me. <laughs> New emote. Jar with hype in it. That contained that contained hype. <laughs> Colin, that's yours. Oh, the speaking hype of jar. speaking of emotes, uh for those of you guys that tuned in on Sunday? I think it was Sunday. My daughter came in on stream while while uh, we were playing and I was playing Destiny and so she uh I was telling her them about her saying milk and she doesn't say milk, she says nelk. And oh. so while we were playing, we had this guy named Milk, Milko, I think was his name. And he was like trying to get into a game, but it took him like, dude, it took him like half an hour to message me, to just message me so that we could get into a game. And he's in chat, like, I'm messaging you. And he was like messaging the wrong people. And it was like, I don't know what, what to do about this specific guy anyway. So my daughter comes on. And so, uh, you know, we were talking about her. Or saying the word milk and having it be milk, so they want a glass of uh, a, a jar of uh, or a glass of milk as an emote. Arctic milk. You seen the uh, Julian Smith milk video? I think you have. It's milk. <laughs> Are you saying milk? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that one. Yeah, milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a cool, cool whip from, from uh, Family Guy. It's cool whip. Say whip. Whip. I say cool whip. <laughs> cool whip. In case anyone has no idea, there's the video for the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. Okay, let's see. Anyways. Uh, any, any more questions? Any more questions? If not, did you play mm -hmm. Returner Castle Wolfenstein? Enemy Territory. Enemy yeah. Territory? Yeah. Yep. Array. H2 is where we met for the first time. Is it? Yes, it would be. Colin hyped emote. What would that be? That'd be Arc, Arc Sky? Arc Sky hype. Arc. It would have to be Arc Sky hype, yeah. You need to update the version of the Dark Logic. Still haven't done that. I know, I'm slacking. It's awful. It takes me too long to do all these things. I need to, I'm actually gonna change out uh, my face and put that, put something else in there. I need to have someone make these. I, I think I know who I'm gonna ask too. <laughs> Better not be me. <laughs> no, no, no. I think I know who I'm gonna ask too. <laughs> Was that the last time I get invited to anything ever again? Yep, Trix. Yep. Yep. Got a bail on people. Bail. He was like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> Fuck your game, I'm out. Steely, you can check that YouTube VOD for that Evolve topic. We talked about it for a good, like, 20 minutes. Yep. So uh, VOD will be up probably a few hours after the show. YouTube 60 FPS is here. We didn't mention that. It is here. Also talked about that earlier. Yeah. Will AWC resurgence in competitive COD? What are you talking about? Competitive COD isn't going anywhere, and they've jumped to the next title every single time. What does a resurgence mean? What do you like, mean resurgence? COD's been growing. COD's just been linearly growing. Smite on next gen hype? Competitive. Yeah, it's not coming for, I think it's the beginning of next year. January 2015? I think so. That's not a bad time frame. Pretty cool. <laughs> I already talked about it. Wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> Drazy is this week's, hey, did I miss anything? <laughs> No nah, man, okay. it's just been going up. I mean, like it might be a small dip in ghosts, but for the most part, it's been going up. They've been getting like 80k for MLG events, but it hasn't gone anywhere. COD's still thriving competitively. Didn't it yeah. decline a bit during Ghost? I mean, sales decline, but competitive Call of Duty is still growing. Yeah, I think it's been about the same or higher viewers the whole well, time. Actually, I don't know if sales declined. 
I don't think they did. Uh, yeah, never mind. Let me retract that statement. I actually don't think they declined. I think there were less pre-orders for Ghost than any any game. Still sold like 20 million or something like that. Pretty nuts. All right, is that it? 10:30. That's it. All right, folks. We're gonna head off for this show. Hope you guys Probably. enjoyed the discussion. Probably have some more Advanced Warfare thoughts next week going up to Halo launch. Yep, yep. And uh, I'm gonna Interstellar tomorrow. Yeah, for me. Colin Cena Friday tomorrow. For you. Friday for me. I'll be seeing the 1115 IMAX 3D showing of Interstellar. Yeah, I got IMAX down at like the, it's like the History Museum here. Be nice. Interstellar. So, pretty excited. I think, uh, I think it'll be fun. Looking forward to, to seeing it, but I uh, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you are on uh, YouTube or on the show and you guys want to watch the rebroadcast on uh, YouTube, you can. Make sure you hit that like button. <laughs> Later. Later. <laughs>